Bonjour et bienvenue à Coffee Break French. Welcome back to Coffee Break French. In lessons 71 to 80, we're going to be doing something a bit different. We are going to be following the adventures of David and Christina, a Scottish couple on holiday in France. And they're going to meet Jean-Jacques and his wife, Sophie. Over the course of the next 10 lessons, we're going to be following their discussion over a meal. And you'll pick up lots of useful vocabulary and new expressions to help you in your journey of learning French. We hope that you enjoy lesson 71 of Coffee Break French. Now, we always try to listen to your feedback and to put into practice some of the things that you're suggesting. One thing that lots of you seem to be finding difficult is actually making that conversation with people when you're abroad in a French-speaking country. It's all very well having the phrases that you can use to achieve certain things like going to the post office or ordering a drink or booking into a hotel. But what about when you're sitting in the cafe and you want to talk to people or when you're perhaps travelling and you want to make conversation with your fellow passengers? Well, we've decided to give you some examples of exactly this kind of conversation. And over the next 10 lessons, we're going to be serialising a kind of soap opera or a radio play where you can follow the characters David and Christina, who are on holiday in the south of France, as they meet Jean-Jacques and Sophie, a couple living in Villefranche, the town where they're on holiday. Now, to explain, Villefranche is a very exclusive holiday resort. It's about six kilometres to the east of Nice, just about 20 minutes from Menton, where I used to live in France. It's a very beautiful part of the world, and if you ever get the chance to go there, or even just take the train from Nice towards the Italian border, then you'll see how beautiful Villefranche and all the other little towns on the Côte d'Azur, the, the Blue Coast, really are. OK, enough background. Let's get into the conversation. David and Christina are heading to a restaurant for dinner. Now, obviously, David and Christina speak to each other in English. So that will help to set the scene a little. But they get lost and they need to ask for directions. So they stop Jean-Jacques, who happens to be walking by, and he helps them with some directions. Have a listen to the first instalment of our radio play, and I'm sure you'll recognise some of the voices. Afterwards, we'll go through the whole thing to see how much you've understood. So wherever you are, however cold it is outside, imagine walking along the street in the village of Villefranche-sur-Mer on a warm summer's evening. I'm sure we turn right up here. No, look at the map. It's definitely left. You're not even holding the map the right way up. I've been to this restaurant before, Le Lion d'Or. I remember where it is. Well, I'm just going by the town plan the lady at the reception gave us, and it makes much more sense if I hold it this way. Let's ask this man. He looks friendly. Oh, OK, but, but let me do the talking. I've been speaking French since I was seven I was seven, seven years, years old. old. Since you were seven years old. Et moi, je ne parle pas français. Ah, d'accord. Excusez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Vous êtes d'ici Oui, monsieur, tout à fait. Je peux vous aider Oui, nous sommes perdus. Oui, nous sommes perdus, comme ma femme vient de dire. Alors, euh, qu'est-ce que vous cherchez Nous cherchons un restaurant qui s'appelle le Lion d'Or. Ah oui Quelle coïncidence euh, Moi aussi, je vais au Lion d'Or. En fait, je vais à ce restaurant-là presque toutes les semaines. Je vais retrouver ma femme euh, là-bas. Ah, excellent Je vais vous le montrer sur votre plan. Mais on peut y aller ensemble, en fait. C'est beaucoup plus facile comme ça, n'est-ce pas Il faut prendre la première rue à gauche. Si, I told you it was on the left. Merci, monsieur. C'est très gentil de votre part. Pas de problème. Vous êtes anglais Non, non. En fait, nous sommes écossais. C'est pas vrai. Ma femme est écossaise, elle aussi. Elle est d'Edimbourg. Tiens, nous habitons à côté d'Edimbourg. Vers Leeds, vous connaissez Oui, je crois qu'elle a des copains qui y habitent. Qu'est-ce que le monde est petit, hein So, how did you find that Hopefully, you've understood a fair bit of it, but there are some interesting language points in there that we're going to talk through. 
Let's listen back to the conversation in small sections and we'll make sure you've understood everything. We'll obviously miss out the first section in English. Excusez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Vous êtes d'ici? So, what was my, or rather, what was David's question to the man passing by? Excusez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Vous êtes d'ici? David said, vous êtes d'ici. Are you from here? Using the vous form, obviously, because he didn't know the man he was speaking to. Vous êtes d'ici. From here. Excusez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Vous êtes d'ici? Oui, monsieur, tout à fait. Je peux vous aider? So Jean-Jacques answer here. Oui, monsieur, tout à fait. Tout à fait means absolutely. So he is d'ici. Il est d'ici. He then says, je peux vous aider? Oui, monsieur, tout à fait. Je peux vous aider? Oui, nous sommes perdus. So Christina, whose voice you may recognize, answers, nous sommes perdus. Perdus comes from the verb perdre. It's an RE verb, perdre, and it means to lose. So, nous sommes perdus, of course, means we are lost. Oui, nous sommes perdus. Now, David repeats this, and he says, oui, nous sommes perdus, comme ma femme vient de dire. Now, can you remember what venir de faire quelque chose means? It's to have just done something. So what does this whole phrase mean? Oui, nous sommes perdus, comme ma femme vient de dire. It's yes, we are lost, as my wife has just said. Vient de dire, ma femme vient de dire. My wife literally comes from to say, my wife has just said. Of course, if you say something like nous sommes perdus to someone because you're lost, you have to be prepared to understand the response. Have a listen to Jean-Jacques' response and see if you can translate exactly what his question is. Alors, euh, qu'est-ce que vous cherchez? So, he says, alors, well, qu'est-ce que vous cherchez? Now, I'm sure you remember what the verb chercher means. It's to look for. So, qu'est-ce que vous cherchez? What are you looking for? So, Jean-Jacques said, vous cherchez? And David's response to this was, nous cherchons. Nous cherchons un restaurant qui s'appelle le Lion d'Or. Literally, we're looking for a restaurant which is called the Lion d'Or, the golden lion, the lion of gold. Nous cherchons un restaurant qui s'appelle le Lion d'Or. And this is where Jean-Jacques realizes, quelle coïncidence, what a coincidence. Now, why is this a coincidence? Have a listen to what he says. Ah oui, quelle coïncidence. Uh, moi aussi, je vais au Lion d'Or. Listen again. Ah oui, quelle coïncidence. Uh, moi aussi, je vais au Lion d'Or. So it turns out that Jean-Jacques is also going to the Lion d'Or. And he adds some extra information. He says how often he goes to the restaurant. See if you can hear how often he goes to that restaurant. En fait, je vais à ce restaurant-là presque toutes les semaines. Je vais retrouver ma femme là-bas. So there's a couple of pieces of information there. Listen again and see if you can spot the first one. That is, how often he goes to the restaurant. En fait, je vais à ce restaurant-là presque toutes les semaines. Je vais retrouver ma femme là-bas. He says, je vais à ce restaurant-là presque toutes les semaines. So, almost toutes les semaines. Literally, all the weeks. So, almost every week. Now, did you get what the second piece of information was about? Listen again. En fait, je vais à ce restaurant-là presque toutes les semaines. Je vais retrouver ma femme là-bas. Je vais retrouver ma femme là-bas. So he's talking about ma femme, his wife. Je vais retrouver ma femme là-bas. Now, trouver means to find. Retrouver, therefore, theoretically, should mean to find again. But it's often used when you're meeting up with someone. Je vais retrouver ma femme à la gare. I'm going to meet up with my wife at the station or something like that. 
So David has asked for directions to the Lion d'Or, and Jean-Jacques is going to show him the restaurant on the map. He says, je vais vous le montrer sur votre plan. Je vais vous le montrer sur votre plan. Now let's think about this a little. Je vais, from aller, I'm going, vous le montrer, montrer is to show, vous in the sense, to you, le, meaning it, referring of course to the restaurant. Je vais vous le montrer sur le plan. Now here, the le is what's called the direct object pronoun. It's standing for le restaurant. And so that he doesn't have to say, je vais vous montrer le restaurant sur le plan. I'm going to show you the restaurant on the, on the, on the map. He simply says, I am going to show you it on the map. We'll be looking at direct object pronouns a little more in the forthcoming episodes. Je vais vous le montrer sur le plan. Je vais vous le montrer sur votre plan. But in fact, Jean-Jacques comes up with another idea. Listen carefully to what he says. Mais on peut y aller ensemble, en fait. Listen again to what he says. Mais on peut y aller ensemble, en fait. Now, the expression « on peut » literally means one can, but on is used in French very regularly as a replacement for nous. So on peut is almost the same as saying nous pouvons, we can. On peut y aller, so aller is to go, y, that little word that is spelled y, meaning there. So on peut y aller, we can go there, Ensemble, together. Listen again. Mais on peut y aller ensemble, en fait. So we can go there together. In English, we probably wouldn't translate there. We just say, we can go together. On peut y aller ensemble. And then Jean-Jacques adds, en fait, in fact. We can go there together, in fact. On peut y aller ensemble, en fait. And he says, it's much easier that way. C'est beaucoup plus facile comme ça, n'est-ce pas? C'est beaucoup plus facile comme ça, n'est-ce pas? Can you remember what the expression n'est-ce pas means? It's one of these phrases or expressions that's added to the end of a statement just to double check or to confirm that that's the case. C'est beaucoup plus facile comme ça, n'est-ce pas? It's much easier that way, isn't it? Now, although they intend now to go together, Jean-Jacques does give some directions. Listen to where exactly they must go. Il faut prendre la première rue à gauche. So what's the direction? It's the first street on the left, as Christina thought all along. David then thanks Jean-Jacques by saying merci, c'est très gentil de votre part. It's very kind of you. Merci, monsieur, c'est très gentil de votre part. Pas de problème, vous êtes anglais So, I'm sure you've understood this question. Vous êtes anglais Are you English Listen to Christina's answer. Non, non, en fait, nous sommes écossais. So, she's using that phrase again. En fait, in fact, we've heard that quite a lot this lesson. En fait, nous sommes écossais. We are Scottish, in fact. And yet another coincidence here. Jean-Jacques says, C'est pas vrai. It's not true, literally. C'est pas vrai. It's a shortened version of ce n'est pas vrai. Remember that when you're speaking informally, it's okay to drop the n of the negative. Ce n'est pas vrai, c'est pas vrai. Je ne sais pas, je sais pas. Now, in this context, c'est pas vrai would mean something like no way. He's expressing his surprise. And why is he expressing his surprise? Well, listen to what he says. C'est pas vrai. Ma femme est écossaise, elle aussi. Elle est d'Edimbourg. So it turns out that Jean-Jacques' wife is in fact Scottish too. Elle est d'Edimbourg. It's actually really tricky sometimes to recognise the names of towns in your country when they're said in the French form. So Edimbourg is Edinburgh. Elle est d'Edimbourg. She's from Edinburgh. And Christina expresses her surprise by using the expression Tiens, tiens, 
It, it means something like, goodness me, or as we would say in Scotland, jings. Tiens. Tiens, nous habitons à côté de Nambour, vers Leith. Vous connaissez? So it turns out that David and Christina habite à côté d'Edimbourg. They live just beside Ed Edimbourg, Edinburgh. They live in Leith. And Christina asks Jean-Jacques if he knows this town. Vous connaissez? Vous connaissez? Now, listen to Jean-Jacques' answer to this question. Oui, je crois qu'elle a des copains qui y habitent. So you possibly picked up the word there, copain. Copain, of course, means friend. So... He said, je crois qu'elle a des copains. I believe, from croire, to believe, I believe qu'elle a des copains. And that's Q-U apostrophe, que elle, that she, a des copains, that she has some friends. And then he said, qui y habite? Who there live? It's tricky to hear that. E in there because it runs together with qui, qui y habite. There's almost a, a sort of double time on qui y habite. Listen again to Jean-Jacques' answer. Oui, je crois qu'elle a des copains qui y habitent. And in another expression of surprise or coincidence, David says, Qu'est-ce que le monde est petit, hein? Qu'est-ce que le monde est petit? Now, taken as a statement, le monde est petit literally means le monde, the world, est petit, is small. Le monde est petit. And when we add qu'est-ce que in front of it, it gives it an extra emphasis. Qu'est-ce que le monde est petit? My goodness me, isn't the world a small place? It's a small world. Qu'est-ce que le monde est petit, hein? So that's as far as we've taken the conversation today, and hopefully it makes much more sense. Listen through again to the whole conversation, and this time, hopefully, you'll have picked up everything. I'm sure we turn right up here. No, look at the map. It's definitely left. <laughs> You're not even holding the map the right way up. I've been to this restaurant before, Le Lion d'Or. I remember where it is. Well, I'm just going by the town plan the lady at the reception gave us, and it makes much more sense if I hold it this way. Let's ask this man. He looks friendly. Oh, OK, but, but let me do the talking. I've been speaking French since I was seven I was seven, seven years, years old. old. Since you were seven years old. Et moi, je ne parle pas français. Ah, d'accord. Excusez-moi, s'il vous plaît. Vous êtes d'ici? Oui, monsieur, tout à fait. Je peux vous aider? Oui, nous sommes perdus. Oui, nous sommes perdus, comme ma femme vient de dire. Alors, euh, qu'est-ce que vous cherchez Nous cherchons un restaurant qui s'appelle le Lion d'Or. Ah oui Quelle coïncidence euh, Moi aussi, je vais au Lion d'Or. En fait, je vais à ce restaurant-là presque toutes les semaines. Je vais retrouver ma femme euh, là-bas. Ah, excellent Je vais vous le montrer sur votre plan. Mais on peut y aller ensemble, en fait C'est beaucoup plus facile comme ça, n'est-ce pas Il faut prendre la première rue à gauche. Si, I told you it was on the left. Merci, monsieur. C'est très gentil de votre part. Pas de problème. Vous êtes anglais Non, non. En fait, nous sommes écossais. C'est pas vrai. Ma femme est écossaise, elle aussi. Elle est d'Edimbourg. Tiens, nous habitons à côté d'Edimbourg, vers Leeds. Vous connaissez Oui, je crois qu'elle a des copains qui y habitent. Qu'est-ce que le monde est petit, hein? And that's where we're going to leave it today for this edition of Coffee Break French. Thanks for joining us, and we hope it's been useful. You can join the Coffee Break French community on Facebook at facebook.com slash coffeebreakfrench. And we're at Learn French on Twitter. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt! This is a production of the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at radiolingua.com.